Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I can't see you, honey. So, I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I can see you now. Woohoo. Woohoo. We're we're done it. Um okay, are we are we live? We are live. We are live. We are live. Okay, cool. Hey friends, how are you? I'm glad somebody else has got a cuppa. Oh, it's not tasting quite right. My coffee machine, I've got well water, and so it's got all the little minerals and stuff in it, and you have uh -huh. to clean it every once in a while. And I cleaned uh -huh. it, and now it's not working properly. I don't know. Technology doesn't like me, I think. <laughs> so, cool. So, how are you doing? Uh, good. My arm hurts from that tetanus shot yesterday. I bet it does. Ouch. Uh, and of course, I haven't gotten any of the flooring put down yet. No, but you've got the stuff. You've got stuff cleared out, and you've got um, you've got the the sort of the flow of the carpets up. So you you know you you're doing good. You're doing good. That somebody thinks so because I look at it like, oh my gosh. Ah, you're fine. You're fine. I've got so yeah. much to do. I know. It's fine. So have you set yourself kind of a, a a target of right, this has got to be done by, or is it just well, well originally it was gonna be done by tomorrow night when the girls come home, and now I'm thinking Melody Rayling can have a sleepover. Um and we'll just get it done when I can get it done. Okay. Um, so no. is that a sleepover in your room or a sleepover in Elena's room? Well, I would like it to be in Elena's room, but it's going to end up being in my room. Um, I I thought about letting them sleep over in the playroom, just having both of them sleep like on the futon in there. and mm -hmm. But that hasn't worked in the past. So we'll see what happens. All right. Cool. Cool. I'm sure they'll love it anyway, which it, whatever way, whatever way it, hurt, it works out. If I'm just like, you can't sleep in your room because of the floor, go in there. Mm -hmm. She's just so excited to get a new floor and not have that carpet. Hello. Hi. Oh, hello, Tennessee. Are you coming to join the live? Are you, honey? You say hi, Auntie Fiona. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Is she talking to you? You cannot Hello. have my coffee. Are you in coffee? I'm having hot chocolate. I don't have, well, not that I don't have, I don't have any non-dairy hot chocolate and I went back on the um, no dairy thing. All right. Okay. Cool. Good, good. <laughs> I think, I think Tennessee wants some hot, so wants some coffee, mom. I don't think Tennessee needs any coffee. <laughs> so, so how are you getting on with um our buddy read? Should we talk about that first, or do we want to talk about? Oh no! Yeah, let's talk about the buddy read first. How far are you? I've got to, I think, the middle of chapter nine or chapter ten. So. They've found the body and they've now the they've had that bump in the road, the foggy night. Yes. And they're now being allowed back into um the shop to start setting it up. So um I've gotten through chapter 15. So let me rewind a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. The uh Elliot has come and he's trying to buy grandma's property mm -hmm. and he's their landlord. Yeah. We don't like him. No, we don't. He's, 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 he's sneaky and conniving and just, I don't, there's something about him I do not like. No, he's really, yeah. See, and I can't say what I was about to say because you're not there yet. No. So... <laughs> Well, we'll do. I guess we should do the backstory for this. Like Beth and I had agreed that we we're going to read another one of Elizabeth Penny's books, 
and we hit on her apron shop series. Now I ordered my copy of the, the paperback copy of the book way back on the 20th of February, okay, from a well-known online retailer. And I was told, right, okay, it will be delivered anytime between the 5th and the the 5th and the 11th of March. And I thought, brilliant, fantastic, great, no problem. I was waiting on Monday and I was checking, I was tracking my package and it was like out for delivery, out for delivery. And it was due to be delivered by eight o'clock at night. Eight o'clock came and went, friends, no book. Went back on to the well-known store and it says, oh, if you haven't received it by the 14th of March, come back to us and we'll give you a full refund. And I'm like, what? Where is my, where is my package? So I ended up sort of having to think, what the heck can I do? So Beth had said she was listening to the book, and I'm like, right, okay, go to Audible. Had a cup, had some credits. Thought, right, okay, I'll just use a credit. Um, so I was, I'm now sort of playing, playing catch up to Beth as to where we are in this buddy read. Um, as so far, the book has not appeared. I haven't had anything correspondence wise from the sellers because I emailed them going where's my book so yeah so hopefully it's going to come but Amazon sent me this like would you like to review I'm like oh yeah one star <laughs> yes. gave them blazes um, but I've decided that if it doesn't arrive by tomorrow one they're going to refund me but two they're also going to refund me for the credit as well um, so yeah so that okay that's my rant over but the book is about, do you want to tell them what it's about since I've had a rant? Sure. It's, uh, oh, you cannot see that. Hi. It's Hymns and Homicide uh, by Elizabeth Finney, of course. And we are following, oh, I've lost her name now. Iris. Thank you. We're following Iris. Uh, she and her grandma are opening an apron shop in Blueberry Falls. Yeah. yeah, Blueberry something. I think it's Blueberry Falls. It is Blueberry Falls. Sweet little village um, in, I want to say Maine, but somewhere in that area. Yeah. And so, like, there's been a lot more tourist action in the last several years. And so they are finally opening an online shop. Not an online. They've had an online shop. Iris has. They're opening a brick and mortar shop <clears throat> with quilts and aprons and all of these things. So they rent the space and they're going in to kind of remodel the space. And as Iris is going downstairs with Ian, mm -hmm. is it Ian? Ian yeah. uh, who is the handyman and her high school crush. Mm -hmm. um, they're going downstairs to look at the breaker and see why the lights went out. She trips, knocks over an old bookshelf and a skeleton pops out of the wall. As it does. As Yeah. As you would assume one one would have happened. Uh, so obviously they freak out. They call the police. Anton comes. And uh, this is like, obviously this is a skeleton. This is not a fresh murder. Uh, but grandma has kind of gone down to look and see what's going on. And she recognizes the headscarf on the skeleton's head and believes it to be a friend of hers from the 70s. And so all of their like grandparents, because of course the police chief, he grew up in Blueberry Falls. Um, she, Iris's grandma and her grandpa, who's recently passed away, Ian's parents, all of their friends, like they, they've all grown up there. And so all of their parents and grandparents like knew this woman, if the skeleton is who they think it is. And so of course, Iris and grandma are trying to figure out what happened because the state police have it and are not, you know, they're trying to figure out exact identity on the skeleton. And, you know, they didn't even have her real name because it was the seventies and she was a hippie. So they only know her by star moonshine or some, something like that. Right? Good evening, you've got to say, yeah. No, nobody knows her actual identity, where she came from. She, that's, you know, the seventies, man. That's all they knew. So 
it's quite fun so far. Um, we are dealing with a little bit of a love story on a couple of fronts, but mm. it's definitely not taking over any part no. of the story. I really appreciate that about Elizabeth Penny. Mm -hmm. It's not like the biggest part. No. I've read some other cozy authors who like every other page, it's a rant about the boyfriend or does he like me or what does he mean when he says, mm -hmm. and you know, this, she's like, he's so cute. Yeah, I mean, is that you've got you've got really you've, po you've possibly got a, a possible romance between Iris and Ian, and then I also think there's it's our best it's best friend in Madison, isn't it? Yes. And there's obviously Anton obviously likes Madison. But oh whether yeah. He's it, whether that is, whether that is reciprocated, we don't know yet. Well, Madison is like 100%. She's not going to find anyone. She's whatever, right? Yeah. We've, we've also had a few chats with her buddies about like we're trying to encourage her to go on dates. And mm -hmm. she's just convinced she's not going to find anyone. And then Anton's over here taking statements like. Yeah. No. I just imagine him with that puppy dog face like. Hi, Madison. Hello. Somebody hit your car. Oh, like, darling, let me help you. Can I can I ride with you? She's like, I can drive myself. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. I, I also like Grandma. I think Grandma is a feisty character who is very capable of standing up to people when she needs to do so. Oh, definitely. I loved that scene where she just like got all up in Elliot's face. Oh, that was good, wasn't it? Po you could just see him poking or poking his yes. chest. Definitely. I had a, so my own grandma, my mom's mom, mm -hmm. she is four foot 10. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. um, and just very, a round grandmotherly figure, right? Mm -hmm. Just, and she does quilting and she'll make you a cup of tea. You know, she's, she's a uh, part Cherokee, part Sioux, grew up in mm -hmm. the South. My grandpa is Irish, mm -hmm. right? So his parents were very much cup of tea fixes everything sort of situation. And Native Americans, cup of tea or a beer, but she doesn't drink, will fix every situation. And so grandma is one of those that's like, we'll put the kettle on and it's all good. But if you make her mad, that little woman grows six feet and she'll just be like, oh. And I imagine, <laughs> I imagined grandma just up in Elliot's face like, oh, not, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I could just see it. Made me so happy. Yeah. I I just think it's it's really good. I also like the fact that she's also Elizabeth Penny's brought in some technology into the into the talk as well, in that, you know, obviously online presence for the shop. Yes. But also there's she's not shying away from online, shall we say, bullying. No, she, she is not. What do you think that, is good? Yeah, I think. And uh, that's something with the Cambridge Bookshop series that I think she balances really well as well. Because we're in a bookshop, or in this case, we're setting up an apron shop. Yeah. But she's got, in both of them, they're selling online. They've got Instagram posts. You know, they're doing all of this. And they're getting emails. Yeah. And could you know, cell phones are involved. She's not just going, there's no technology or it's all technology. She's yeah. got such a nice balance. Oh, brilliant balance. And I mean, the characters for both series are so good. They are so well written and portrayed that you actually do feel that you know them. Oh, definitely. And I love that they're not 21. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so many of them are either the main character is 23, just graduated college and came back to town, or, you know, I'm 24 and I'm just opening my own shop in this town I've never lived in before. Mm -hmm. uh, and she definitely has, you know, these are women who are a little older. They're not, it's not the grandma doing it all. You know, no. these are, I don't even know. Do we know how old Iris and Madison are? I don't know. I don't. I haven't. I haven't heard the way I'm looking at it. I think that 
I mean, Madison's obviously she'd gone to not Madison. Iris had gone to university, and she'd worked. You know, when she came out of university, she worked for that um, company that she was designing table yeah. gear and stuff like that. So I would put I would put Iris probably maybe 26, 27. I don't know, because it sounded like she had worked for that company for several years. So maybe she's in her early 30s. So, yeah, I, they might be late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, but they, great. Yeah, they feel like peers, not like yes. not like one of my students and not like somebody way above me. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then in the Cambridge Bookshop, she's in her 30s. Yeah. So and I, I really, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the Cambridge Bookshop I also like is the fact that we've got Molly, the main, so the, shall we say, in inverted commas, main character. We've then got her mum and we've all got her aunt. So you've got three generations Yes. in that story. And you've got line, you've got sort of timelines with these, or storylines with each of these characters, which I think is brilliant. Yes, and you get, like, you get to know them. I feel like mm -hmm. I know... Molly's mom and aunt, and I feel like I'm getting to know Iris's grandma and yeah. some of her friends mm -hmm. because of the way that everything is being interwoven. Yeah. You're finding out backstory, not just on like Madison and Iris and those, the other two friends who have a sewing circle, which I think is yeah. absolutely delightful. Like one of them's married, has a couple of kids. Mm -hmm. Is that Bella who runs the Italian? Yes. And then you've got Sophie who runs the the cafe. Yes. And one of them, like, you know, she's married to a lobster man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so she's like talking about stuff she's doing at the, at the restaurant and the mm -hmm. new recipe she's coming out with and how she used to be a sous chef before she mm -hmm. came back over here. And they're talking about the kids. So like, you're getting to know, Iris and Madison, but also oh, Sophie and Bella. Uh -huh. Just Excuse their backstories. Folks are phones oh. going. Hold on a minute. Give me two shakes. I'll refill my coffee. You do that. Hello. Okay, what's wrong? Okay, no problems, right? Okay, um, I shall. Give me two minutes to just t chat with uh, Beth's off making coffee. I'll be down in two shakes, okay? Okay, bye. Right, okay, I'm going to have to go. Um, can we reschedule this for maybe in a couple of, say, an hour? Or can you hang on for, say, 10, 20 minutes? Mum and Dad were away. Mum's car keys won't work to open their car. Oh, no. So I uh, need to go um, rescue them. If you will just message me when you're home and can, yep. uh, we will... Go ahead and start a new stream. Okay, that's All great. Right. Cheers, bud. Bye. Bye.